Welcome to the Creed Conspiracy. We'll provide you the evidence. You must decide what is truth, what is false, and what is misinformation. On today's episode, we'll take you back in time, 110 years, to one of America's first UFO sightings. Mystery airships or phantom airships are a class of unidentified flying object best known from a series of newspaper reports originating in the western United States and spreading east during late 1896 and early 1897. According to researcher Jerome Clark, airship sightings were reported worldwide during the 1880s and 1890s. Mystery airship reports are seen as a cultural predecessor to the modern claims of extraterrestrial piloted flying saucer style UFOs. Typical airship reports involved unidentified lights, but more detailed accounts report ships comparable to a dirigible. Reports of alleged crew members and pilots usually describe them as human looking, although sometimes the crew claimed to be from Mars. It was popularly believed that the mystery airships were a product of some inventor of genius who was not ready to make knowledge of his creation to the public. For example, Thomas Edison was so widely speculated to be the mind behind the alleged airships that in 1897 he was forced to issue a strongly worded statement denying his responsibility. It has been frequently argued that the mystery airships are unlikely to represent test flights of real human manufactured dirigibles as no record of successful sustained or long-range airships flights are known from the period it would have been impossible not to mention irrational to keep such a thing secret to the contrary however there were in fact several functional airships manufactured before 1896 and 1897 solomon andrews made successful test flights of his Arion in 1863 but their capabilities were far more limited than the mysterious airship. Reese and others note that the contemporary American newspapers of the yellow journalism era were more likely to print manufactured stories and hoax than modern news sources, and editors of the late 1880s would often have expected the reader to understand such stories were phony. Most journalists of the period did not seem to take the airships very seriously as after the major 1896 and 1897 were concluded. The subject fell quickly from public consciousness. The airship stories received further attention only after 1896 and 7. Newspaper reports were largely rediscovered in the mid-1960s and the UFO investigators suggested that the airships might represent earlier predecessors to the post-World War II UFO sighting. The best known of the mysterious airship waves began in California in 1896. Afterwards, reports and accounts of similar airships came from other areas, generally moving eastwards across the country. Some accounts during this wave of airship reports claim that occupants were visible on some airships and encounters with the pilots were reported as well. These occupants often appear to be human, 
though their behavior, mannerisms, and clothing were sometimes reported to be unusual. Sometimes the apparent humans claimed to be from the planet Mars. Historian Mike Dash described and summarized the 1896 and 1897 series of airship sightings, writing, Not only were the mysterious airships bigger, faster, and more robust than anything produced by aviators of the world, they seemed to be able to fly at enormous distances, and some were equipped with giant wings. The 1896-7 and seven airship wave is probably the best investigated of all historical anomalies. The files of almost 1,500 newspapers from across the United States have been combined for reports and astonishing feat of research. The general conclusion of investigation was that a considerable number of sample sightings were misidentifications of planets, stars, and a large number of the more complex result of hoax and practical jokes. The Sacramento Bee and the San Francisco Call reported the first sighting on November 18, 1896. Witnesses report a light moving slowly over the Sacramento River on the evening of November 17th at an estimated 1,000 foot estimation. Some witnesses say that they could see a dark shape behind the light. A witness named R. L. Lowry reported that he heard a voice coming from the craft issuing commands to increase elevation in order to avoid hitting a church steeple. Lowry added it was no doubt meant to be a wink to the readers that he believed the apparent captain was referring to the tower of a local brewery, as there was no churches nearby. Lowry further described the craft as being powered by two men exerting themselves on bicycle pedals. Above the pedaling men appeared to be a passenger compartment, which lay under the main body of the dirigible. A light was mounted on the front end of the airship. Some witnesses report the sound of singing as the craft passed overhead. The November 19, 1896 edition of the Stockton, California Daily Mail featured one of the earliest accounts of an alleged alien sighting. Colonel H.G. Shaw claimed that while driving his buggy through the countryside near Stockton, he came across what appeared to be a landed spacecraft. Shaw described it as having a metallic surface which was completely featureless apart from a rudder and pointed ends. He estimated the diameter of 25 feet and said the vessel was around 150 feet in total length. Three cylindrical, seven foot tall apparent extraterrestrials were said to approach from the craft while emitting a strange warbling noise. The beings reportedly examined Shaw's buggy then tried to physically force him to accompany them back to the airship. The aliens were said to give up after realizing they lacked the physical strength to force Shaw into the ship. They supposedly fled back to their ship which lifted off the ground and out of sight. Shaw believed that the beings were Martian sent to kidnap an earthling for unknowable but potential nefarious purposes. This has been seen by some as an early attempt at alien abduction. It is apparently the first published account of explicit extraterrestrial beings attempting to kidnap humans into their spacecraft. The mysterious light reappeared over Sacramento the evening of November 21st. It was also seen over Folsom, San Francisco, Oakland, Modesto, Manteca, Sebastro, and several other cities later that same evening and was reportedly viewed by hundreds of witnesses. One witness from Arkansas, allegedly a former state Senator Harris, was supposedly told by an airship pilot during the tensions leading up to the Spanish-American War that the craft was bound for Cuba to use its Hotchkiss gun to kill Spaniards. In one account from Texas, three men reported an encounter with an airship with five particularly well-dressed men who asserted that they were descendants of the Lost Tribes of Israel and had learned English from the 1553 North Pole Expedition led by Hugh Wolterby. On February 2, 1897, the Omaha Bee reported an airship sighting over Hatchkins, Nebraska the previous day. 
An article in the Albion Weekly Press reported that two witnesses saw an airship crash just inches from where they were standing. The airship suddenly disappeared with the man standing where the vessel had been. The airship pilot showed the men the small device that he supposedly enabled him to shrink the airship small enough to store in his pocket. On April 10, 1897, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch published a story reporting that one of W.H. Hopkins' encounters with a grounded airship was about 20 feet in length and 8 feet in diameter, near the outskirts of Springfield, Missouri. The vessel was apparently propelled by three large propellers and crewed by a beautiful nude woman and a bearded man also nude. Hopkins attempted with some difficulty to communicate with the crew in order to ascertain their origins. Eventually they understood that Hopkins was asking them and they both pointed to the sky and uttered something that sounded like the word Mars. On April 16, 1897, the story was published by the Table Rock Argus claimed that a group of anonymous but reliable witnesses had seen an airship sailing overhead. The craft had many passengers. The witness claimed that among these passengers was a woman tied to a chair, a woman attending her, and a man with a pistol guarding their apparent prisoner. Before the witness thought to contact the authorities, the airship was already gone. The most famous of the airship reports was the account from Aurora, Texas, related in the Dallas Morning News on April 19, 1897, reported that a couple days before an airship had smashed into a windmill, later determined to be a sup pump belonging to Judge Praktor, then crashed. The occupant was dead and mangled, but the story reported that the presumed pilot was clearly not an inhabitant of this world. Strange hieroglyphic features were seen on the wreckage which was a mixture of aluminum and silver. It must have weighed several tons. In the 20th century, unusual metallic material recovered from the presumed crash site was shown to contain a percentage of aluminum and iron admixed. The story ended by noting that the pilot was given a Christian burial in the town cemetery. In 1973, MUFON investigators discovered the alleged stone marker used in the burial. Their metal detectors indicated a quantity of foreign material might remain buried there. However, they were not permitted to exhume, and when they returned several years later, the headstone and whatever metallic material that had laid beneath it was gone. Worldly Explanations Hoaxes or Misidentifications During the 1896 through 1897 wave, there were many attempts to explain the airship sightings, including suggestions of hoax, pranks, publicity stunts, and hallucinations. One man suggested that the airships were swarms of lightning beetles misidentified by observers. Jacobs believes that many of the airship tales originated with enterprising reports perpetuating journalistic hoaxes. He notes that many of these accounts are easy to identify because of their tongue-in-cheek tone and accent on the sensational. Furthermore, in many such newspaper hoaxes, the author makes his intent obvious by saying in the last line he was writing from an insane asylum or something to that effect. Human Airships Some argue that the airship reports were genuine accounts, steerable airships publicly flown in the U.S. since the Arion in 1863, and numerous inventors were working on airships in aircraft design. The idea that a secretive inventor might develop a viable craft with advanced capabilities was the focus of Jules Verne's 1886 novel, Robur the Conqueror. In fact, two French army officers and engineers, Arthur Krebs and Charles Renard, had successfully flown an electric-powered airship called La France as early as 1885, making no fewer than seven successful flights in the craft over an 11-month period. Also during the 
1896 through 97 period. David Schwarz built an aluminum skinned airship in Germany that successfully flew over Templefor Field before being irreparably damaged during a hard landing. Both events clearly demonstrate that the technology to build practical airships exists during the period in question. Although, if the reports of the capabilities of the California and Midwest airship sightings are true, it would have been considerably more advanced than any airship built up to that time. Several individuals, including Lyman Gilmore and Charles Del Show, were later identified as possible candidates for being involved in the design and construction of airships, although little evidence was found to support these ideas. Claims of Extraterrestrial Origin Early sources citing the extraterrestrial hypothesis, all from 1897, include the Washington Times, which speculate that the airships were a reconnoitering party from Mars, and the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, which suggested that the airships, these may be visitors from Mars, fearful at the last, invading the planet they have been seeing. In 1909, a letter printed to the Tago Times, New Zealand, suggested that the mysterious airship sightings then being reported in the country were due to Martian atomic-powered spaceships. Jerome Clark writes, One curious feature of the post-1887 airship waves was a failure of each to stick in the historical memory. Although in 1909, for example, brought a flood of sightings worldwide and attended discussion and speculation, contemporary accounts do not allude to the huge publicized events of little more than a decade earlier. Clark writes that many attempts to uncover the truth about the late 19th century airship scare comes up against some unhappy realities. Newspaper coverage was unreliable. No independent investigators spoke directly with the alleged witnesses or attempted to verify or debunk their testimony, and with a single unsatisfactory explanation. No eyewitness was ever interviewed, even in the 1950s, when some were presumably still living. The single unsatisfactory exhibition Clark cites in the former San Francisco Chronicle employee interviewed via telephone by... Edward J. Rupert in 1952. Rupert wrote that the man had been a crop boy and remembered the incident, but time had canceled out the details. He did tell me that the editor of the paper and the news staff had seen the ship, as he referred to the UFO. His story, even though it was 56 years old, smacked of others I've heard when he said that no one at the newspaper ever told anyone about what they'd seen. They didn't want people to think they were crazy. Jacob notes, most arguments against the airship idea came from individuals who assumed that the witnesses did not see what they claimed to see. This is the crucial link between the 1896 and 7 phenomenon and the modern unidentified flying object phenomenon beginning in 1947. It was also central to debate over whether unidentifying flying objects constituted a unique phenomenon. It is our hope that we provided you with enough information to make an informed decision. Stay tuned.